What's good YouTube, it's just a site to be paid and today I'm back with another video and in this video I'm going to be talking about the content creator to rapper road and how tough that can be sometimes but before I get into that make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to all those things it helps me out a ton. And really quickly I gotta give a shout out to DDG just for making this a relevant topic so it's something that I could talk about because it's something that I've had in the back of my mind for a while now and I've also made a video somewhat similar to this one on this kind of topic before but recently DDG has gotten into another internet beef with a streamer this time it's Plaque Boy Max and he got into a beef with this guy for the main reason that DDG ends up in beefs nowadays and it's people disrespecting his music or him feeling that people have been disrespecting his music he's gotten into beefs with people like Bruce drop him off because of the exact same thing gun to the back of your head name five DDG songs and this is the clip that kind of started it all off play that new DDG <laughs> what? What? Yeah. The beef pretty much devolved into these guys getting into like a call and talking about it on stream and arguing and going back and forth. Speak on my shit at all. I don't give a fuck who listen to it. If you don't fuck with it, you ain't got to speak on it, especially if you met me in person, bro. But this is something that happens quite often for DDG, like I mentioned earlier. And this is because he is super sensitive to any content creator opinion on his music. And I don't mean content creator like myself, like I'm a music page, so... I guess he'd be a little bit more understanding, but just in general, like regular streamers or YouTubers that are in his kind of bubble. And this is because of how hard he's had it as a YouTuber who's tried to translate into the rapping world and how much slack he gets because of that transition. So whenever somebody who is from his world, as he calls it, gives him so any sort of real criticism or kind of laughs at his music in the way that Max seemed to be laughing in that clip or the way that Bruce drop him off disrespected him on that stream with Lucky. Whenever that really happens for him, he takes it very, very seriously because he feels like you guys should understand where I'm coming from. You know the that we come from the same exact world and you know how hard it is for me to kind of shake that stigma of being a content creator who's just trying to get some quick clout off of rap and that's why he gets so sensitive and is very hyper-focused on anybody from his world that kind of laughs off or disrespects his music. This is because of people like Bad Baby or Jake Paul, these huge content creators online, these people who got famous off Vine or Instagram or whatever the hell, who end up making music and just kind of dipping their hands in the rap bowl just to receive the clout off of it, just to receive the benefits that come from it while not really taking the craft seriously, not caring or about respecting hip hop or respecting rap and its traditions. So when someone like DDG decides that he wants to be a rapper, Nobody really takes him serious. Nobody takes that type of content creator rapper serious, especially when that person is still posting on YouTube or still doing their little Twitch streams that they were doing beforehand. It's just like, ah, he's just here to have fun. He's not really here to take it serious. He's not here to be a real rapper. So DDG is already fighting the fight that most rappers are fighting when it comes to just like getting people to listen to your music, especially new people. That's already hard enough. But now he's also fighting the fight for people to actually take him seriously, for people to understand that he's not doing this just as play. So in him having to take both of those fights head on, it's created a high, high level of sensitivity when it comes to people from his side of things being you know, disrespectful to his craft because they should know how hard it is. They should know what it's like to be somebody who's not taken seriously because even when you look outside of just like the rap space, the rap bubble, YouTubers and content creators aren't really taken that serious as celebrities in general, right? Like nobody looks at, you know, a streamer the same way that they look at an actor or a singer or that they look at any other type of celebrity, a comedian or a talk show host. Like it's just not taken very seriously in the world in general. Most people look at content creators as kind of weird. They're just like, all right, somehow they make money on the internet thing, on the TikTok thing. They don't really understand it. So even outside of just rap, there overall isn't a high level of respect for content creators like YouTubers and streamers. So when DDG feels like they're going against him, it's like betrayal in a sense. Now, is DDG in this situation doing way too much? Of course, absolutely. But I think we all have to acknowledge that he's coming from somewhere that is at least understandable. When you've taken so much slander trying to transition and everyone just calls you a YouTuber, ah, you a YouTube rapper, you're not a real rapper, you a YouTube rapper. When people from your own space do that to you as well, like I, I get why he could be frustrated at that. And it's kind of like, you know, he's been fighting this criticism from the outside world. So now when people inside his world do it too, it hurts, you know, it, it, it hits a little different, let's just say. It's like if every time somebody walked up to you and raised their hand like this and then smacked you, the next time somebody raised their hand like this, 
when they walked in front of you, you would think that they're going to smack you. You're going to prepare like they're about to smack you. You might smack them first when in reality they were just trying to get a high five. But you've been so conditioned to see this and immediately think, oh my gosh, I'm about to get smacked. I have to defend myself that that's what you do. Getting respect in rap is something that's really hard to do, especially if you're somebody who gained notoriety from outside places and then try later on to be a rapper. People just don't really give you that level of respect that other rappers get because they've been doing it for a really long time. So if you haven't dedicated your entire life pretty much to rapping, sometimes it's hard to get that. You know, on rare occasions like a little baby, you get it very early on. But for the most part, rap is kind of a place where respect is earned, not just necessarily given. And for guys who are outsiders coming into rap, it's even worse. But even sometimes for the guys who have always been rappers, they don't even get that same level of respect just because of the type of music that they make. You can look at early Drake. Drake, before he really became like the number one guy in rap in terms of popularity and stardom, he was not very well respected. People didn't even want to call him a rapper. People were like, can you even call Drake a rapper? Like people would say things like that because they didn't respect him. They didn't respect his craft as a rapper because, you know, he would sing sometimes or something like that. He was too sensitive to be a rapper or Lil Yachty when he first came into the game, even still today to a certain extent, but in, especially in the beginning, people didn't respect him as a rapper. He was having too much fun. He didn't take the craft serious. And and he was just out here ruining music and taking it and turning it into something bastardized. And so even guys that are inside of rap have a hard time sometimes getting that respect. So imagine being somebody who's coming from Vine or coming from making funny skits on TikTok or doing goofy pranks, couple pranks on YouTube. Now, I'm not saying that content creators can't have any success in rap because it happens all the time. You know, Jake Paul has a whole bunch of songs that have millions of views and he has some platinum songs and so does somebody like Rice Gum. I Show Speed has songs with millions and millions of views and so does Kai Sinat. So it's not completely impossible for content creators to be successful in the rap space. There's just one thing that all of these names that I've listed so far have in common and it's that they didn't really take it that seriously. They weren't really trying to be full-time rappers. They just kind of did it for gits and shiggles like it was just for fun and they didn't really take it much further than them dropping songs here and there an example of a content creator who decided to become a full-time ish rapper and actually had a lot of success with it is ksi despite the fact that i think ksi is terrible i i don't like any of his music but he's undeniably been successful in his music ventures, you know, doing shows and having a whole bunch of songs with crazy features and a whole bunch of numbers. Like he's been very successful, but there is another thing that I have found in common with all the names that I listed so far. And it's that these are mega stars. These are huge content creators. These are the top of the top. These are pillars of content creation online. These guys are transcending social media and social media culture. They already have a massive audience of tens of millions of people and a crazy fan base that will support literally anything they do. So them having success in rap doesn't really mean much. They could literally like shard on a hoodie and sell it to the masses. And when you take a little bit of a step down from guys like all the way at the top, like those people like KSI, you know, uh, Kai Sinat and step down to like a DDG, which mind you, I'm not trying to say DDG is a small YouTuber. He's also been really, really huge on YouTube. He's just not to those guys levels. It becomes a lot harder because you don't have that same fan base that's just rabbit over you not to say that ddg doesn't have a fan base obviously he does but it's not the same so it becomes way harder for a ddg in comparison to jake paul who had you know 20 million subscribers or however many subscribers he has on youtube it's just a different level of difficulty when you're not one of those top top guys in terms of just content creation in general everyone who's on youtube knows who jake paul is everyone who's on youtube at all pretty much knows who kai Sinat is or speed is but not everyone on youtube knows who ddg is despite the fact that he does have millions of subscribers that's why it's just different that's why when you look at somebody like bad baby who actually you know she had a couple decent songs. I'm not going to lie. Like so, she, had, she had some decent work. I'm not going to lie. That's why you see Bad Baby, though, not try to be a full-time rapper. She did some rapping here and there, but she went and did OnlyFans, which is way easier to do. And she's 20 times more successful, 30, probably hundreds of times more successful doing OnlyFans than whatever she would have been able to do as a full-time rapper. Even when more traditional celebrities try to cross over into rap like Shaq or The Rock, people, again, just don't really take them serious because... Rap fans really, really focus on authenticity. Like that matters a lot to rap fans, probably more than almost any other genre, maybe besides like heavy metal where, the, where they're like, you're not really heavy metal, man. Like that's probably the only other genre where they take it as serious as they do in rap. But 
Authenticity is a huge deal. And if you're somebody who's already super famous and successful outside of rap, and then you just kind of jump in one day despite never touching a microphone before that, people don't think you're being authentic. Authentic. They think you're doing a clout move. They think you're trying to just get up off of rap because a lot of people get up off of rap and then just go and do something else. Look at Post Malone. He was a rapper, you know, in 2016. Now, I don't know what to, he's a pop country, whatever you want to call him, guy. So we are used to people using rap and then just moving on. And that's what a lot of rap fans see content creators as, especially when they're like influencers and not like, you know, big celebrities like The Rock and Shaq, where maybe they could just do a passion project here or there. Or maybe like Dame, Damian Lillard, where he's an NBA player, but also he seems to like rap, especially when it's those guys that are influencers. Their levels of authenticity just aren't there. They're just not there. When you grow your entire fan base off of doing comedy skits and, you know, flexing online, look at this Bugatti I bought at 23, or when you get lit off of couples pranks, people aren't going to think that you're being legit and that you're actually taking the craft serious because that's what people see rap as in art craft. They don't think you're taking it serious when you're that guy and now you're trying to be a rapper all of a sudden. Another reason why content creators tend to fail when they transition over to rap is because for a lot of people, it ends up being kind of a last resort. You know, a lot of people, especially some years ago, not necessarily now because there's a lot more ways to make money online now, but back earlier in, you know, social media days when YouTube and Vine and Instagram were the only real ways to kind of blow up, um, People just didn't really know what to do to make money. They would try things, but rap was one of the things that was just like a last resort. It was kind of like a thing where it's like, okay, you blew up out of nowhere. You went super duper viral. You don't really know what to do. Try rapping. Like that was just, kind of, that was just kind of a thing people did. You know, they would blow up on Vine. Oh my gosh, here's a mixtape. Like you've never rapped a day in your life before, but people didn't have a way to make money online. So that was the thing that a lot of people leaned on. That's why when you see people like Chris Sean Rock make music, it's not taken seriously because she's not a rapper. She's never really been a rapper, but she blew up and there was really no plan to do certain things. You know, she's got a reality show here. You know, starting a business is kind of hard. You know, selling merch is kind of hard. It takes a lot of money to spend on your own. It's a lot easier to just, you know, hire a producer, get an engineer, have somebody write the song for you and then try to have them like, you know, put things together, kind of like a Frankenstein monster. That's a lot easier to do than starting a business, selling merch, uh, providing a product to the to the world, you know, starting a clothing brand. Like it, it's a lot easier to just get in the booty, uh, the booty, wow, the studio and be a puppet. That's what I was going for. The booty is nuts. It's a lot easier to get in the studio and just be a puppet and try to make somewhat decent music as somebody who already has a huge audience and then give it to them because they don't have to buy it. They can just click on it on YouTube or click on it on Apple Music. It's a lot easier to do that than try to sell a $25 t-shirt or sell a $50 body suit as a lot of women like to do or you know stuff like that male rappers haven't really had a lot of success transferring from like a content creator internet personality to a rapper but i will say that there have been some women who have been able to do it over the years uh, especially at the top of rap for men that just really doesn't exist but with women it kind of, you know, there's a little bit of a lane. You can kind of squeak your way through. Like Cardi B, Cardi B was a, you know, TV show personality. She was on Love and Hip Hop. She was a reality TV show personality, but she was also a, a social media star. She was an influencer. She was really, really big on Instagram before she really started to take off with like Bodak Yellow and stuff like that. So she's kind of somebody who was a little bit of a content creator influencer and in transition to, you know, a, a rapper. She's probably the best example of that that we have in the modern times. And even somebody like Sexy Red, who has always kind of been a rapper, she was an internet personality and kind of a meme rapper, and she still is to a certain extent, but she was more of a meme rapper before she really blew up with uh, Pound Town. She was kind of just making funny stuff and being a little bit more of a personality than a rapper, but still, she ended up blowing up in a, you know, traditional sense and now being a full-time, you know, I don't want to say, like, respected rapper, but, like, somebody that everyone understands and takes seriously as a rapper, and I think this is just mostly due to the fact that women rappers, women who are rappers have women fan bases and women are just statistically much better fans than men. They're more likely to spend money. They're more likely to buy tickets. They're more likely to buy your merch. They're more likely to support you than men are. So that's probably why that carryover from content creator to rapper is a little bit better and a little bit easier for women because men just like, they just, we, we just don't support you. We just don't. Okay. And that's proof by y'all not hitting the subscribe button. Make sure y'all are subscribing and leaving a like and doing all those things. So there is a bit of a lane to go from content creator to rapper. It's just a road that's taken by a lot of content creators that they end up quitting on halfway through or very early 
on into the road. They don't typically follow it all the way through. They don't go all the way through with the road. They just kind of test it out because they know it's there and they know it's probably easier, but they look down and they see how long it is and they're just like, all right, it's just not worth it. So they just end up dropping it. And that's why I actually do give DDG a lot of respect, despite the fact that I don't think he's a great rapper. You know, he's got some good songs here and there. I'd probably describe him as mid. He's all right. He's not bad. You got to give him respect as a YouTube rapper because he's the one that's had the most success with it. You know, you can look outside of rap and look at somebody like Joji, who's had a lot of success as a musician. And the fact that that guy has had mu musician success is crazy to me because those Filthy Frank videos, I don't even know if I can say his name on YouTube. Like, those videos were nuts. Like, I remember being online and being a young teenager for those years. That was crazy. But um, there's been nobody who's really had this level of success that DDG has had as a YouTube rapper having platinum songs and selling you know decent numbers on projects and doing shows and stuff nobody's really done it outside of ksi and ksi could literally do any business venture in the world and have success with it because of how popular he is on youtube because of how big he is he's doing boxing right now and you know he's doing he could do anything and have success as a rapper that's why i give ddg a little bit more respect than i would ksi because he is somebody that really had to sell out and just do the rap thing of course he still does youtube here and there but it's just not the same he doesn't have the same level of support that's why it's different to me and that's why despite not liking ddg's music whoever you are watching this video you don't have to like it you do have to give him some respect as a youtube rapper so yeah i just wanted to shine a little bit of light on how difficult it seems to be to transition from a content creator to a rapper and ddg in this little beef that he's gone into with Black Boy Max has given me a little bit of an excuse to do that because most content creators that you know do rap songs here and there they just do it for fun they don't really take it that serious and they don't follow through with it and he actually did follow through with it so it was somebody that was perfect for me to talk about in this video and, and also he brought it up so shout out to DDG for that I appreciate it but if you made it this far I greatly greatly appreciate you make sure you leave a like comment subscribe do all those things it helps me out a ton I go by the name of pay peace